Cool. Yeah. 115, Ren? 115. Uh, yeah, 115. Roger. Uh, looks to be mostly a long contour. All right, another survey question for the van. Yeah. What was the first album you bought for yourself? Oh, goodness. Hmm. It's too embarrassing, so we're not going <laughs> to. Uh, Kids bought volume 20. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> Ready? Well, Jake, you probably didn't actually have to buy no. albums. I was yeah, a CD guy. I was a CD. I'll CD. go. Well, no, I mean, CD's fine. I, mine was a tape, but I'll go. <laughs> Inagata de Vida. Ooh. Iron Butterfly. Yeah. What was 1968. that? 1968. Inagata de Vida. And that was uh, on vinyl. Mine was Duran Duran 7 and the Ragged Tiger. Oh. Mine was Police Synchronicity. 1983. Nice. These are like too cool. We were we were kids and we were buying CDs, right. so we can't. All right, I'll go. Yeah. It was probably like in sync or Backstreet Boys. Let's uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm with you there. Mine was definitely nope. Backstreet Boys. Nope. <laughs> Ready? Uh, Please say Britney Spears. I want to say, <laughs> like I had. I had like Weezer Blue album on cassette, and I was, but I'm pretty sure okay. that that was my sister's. <laughs> I just inherited that, so I think my first like purchase was was a CD, was Weird Al Yankovic, awesome, uh, nice. Bad Hair Day, <laughs> nice. which was a great album <laughs> <laughs> that I still know all the words to. <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. I'm a big big Weird Al fan. There's a yeah. Galathea Squat Lobster. Nice. Go ahead and push on in on this squat lobster here. And usually wouldn't pay if a squat lobster any mind when we're in a coral field, but because he's the only thing around. I wonder if he's searching for his forever home. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we could make a like a adopt a sea, deep sea creature <laughs> kind of web page. Like that. <laughs> Abby Back. is looking for his forever home. Yeah. Uh, Crack? Sorry? So we're falling. We're oh, yeah, we're yeah. falling wide. Yeah. Away from it. The lights are getting dark. Full wide, please. We get all the albums. Oh, we still got. Uh, Jake, yes. can chime in. I'm pretty sure mine was first the album is the Green Amstra. Day. Green Day album. Oh, Green Day. Sure. Oh, that's that's a good one. one. I had I had Dookie on cassette as well. <laughs> my sister Those are my two like cool cassettes. My sister used to always burn me like CDs like yeah. like different oh. songs. So that was that's like what I really remember. Yeah. I don't remember like a specific album. Jess. Huh. No, mine was definitely Backstreet Boys or Solid. Sync. I had way too much of a small girl crush on them. <laughs> Does the slope really fall off there to the? Kind of looks like it yeah, from it looks Argus. Like it. it gets like it, it was looking like it got rougher in this direction. This is on the steeper side. <laughs> we can go look at it. You can get a good view here in yeah. Argus. I think we'll be oh, kind of yeah, a long steep. contour for this next move. All right, a question from a viewer. Have we noticed that the animals, such as anemones, corals, and sponges, are preferring one kind of substrate or rock over another? 
Uh, there's pretty much one type of rock here. It's manganese crust on top of something. But we definitely have seen that they like um, these steep slopes and kind of rough terrain, you know? So when it's a kind of wide open flat space, there we don't see as much. And, but when it's kind of bouldery, we see, seems like we see more. And when we were coming up yesterday, <coughs> yesterday when we were coming up these steeper walls, there was a ton of stuff. So and we I had think a they few have a really big rocks that were really coated with yeah. different organisms. Got them up a little higher. Yeah, they like to get up into the the flow, so to speak. So anywhere they can get higher. So that, yeah, I, I think they do have a preference, or I'm not sure if that's a preference in where they settle, but when they settle in a good spot, they're can you, can you more successful. Right. This texture is really cool. You can really see that it's a bunch of consolidated pieces together over time. Yeah. Looks like the possibly the militaris on the Yeah. And uh, maybe a wall. sponge down there too. Yeah. It's very cool. Is it possible to get cinders under the ocean fit in full wide, please, there, Dave? Not really. I I mean, I've definitely seen pumice that form subsea, but cinders are typically in a from basaltic volcanoes, mm -hmm. and uh, hydrostatic pressure keeps them from vesiculating. Although there is uh, places like Heme uh, in or no, I'm sorry, Surtse in Iceland, where the eruption is shallow enough that even eventually you like build an island and there you definitely can. Kay. Oh, and there's uh, the lava balloons, right? Rennie, were you out on Revigedo? Yeah. So there, there's, I don't know, what's the depth of the, the that you guys were working at? We were, we, I mean, we started at the base, like really as low as we could go. Do a partial way there. And working our way partial up. Partial zoom there, please, Dave. Yeah, so there, there was enough gas in the in the lava to actually produce balloons, basically. And we saw them on the seafloor as well, just the busted open balloons. Got any more zoom there, Dave? That was part of Megan's. Yeah, the that's right. Yeah, she was doing right? some like intense imaging of those. So they kind of look just, like buddies. Yeah. yeah. Do you think this is more um, deposit or like t like talus? Uh, yeah, I think this is a yeah a, a talus kind of pile that has been cemented. That's at least what it looks like. Mm. Pull right there, please, Dave. Whoa! What's down on the bottom? Oh, is that just sediment? It looks like it. Yeah. I see like a lot of white like that, and I thought it was. Uh, Lambs or something. We might be able to uh, get down a little bit as over Argus goes overhead. Yeah. Not too yeah, it much. It just looks like on sediment with yeah. dark rocks on it. Yeah. How come it's so hard to go downhill, Jess and Jake? We we want to make sure Argus is uh, not going to go into the wall. Okay. Yeah. So. And also, if you're like looking our forward, yeah, our cameras are your, your butts hitting. The slope going down, and you're like farther off the. Okay. Slope. You'd have to like go sideways it's or harder backwards, to get, and then you can't really see. Close to the, what you're looking at, the yeah. scenery. Yeah, I mean, this is a non-ideal scenario where we have uh, so Argus, obviously, as it heaves, we don't want it to bump into the seafloor, mm. and we're kind of like straddling between a higher, like this wall, like on the left, the top of the wall, and then the deeper part where we want to interrogate. So you can't really put Argus too low or it'd be against the wall or slamming into it. So we can, of course, adjust for that and move the ship around, but not, I mean, 3,000 meters depth that you were kind of like, it would take a long time to set up for something like that. Yeah. And so what are you looking at, Jake, to tell you the altitude? Um, we have an altimeter on uh, Argus, uh, but sometimes it's unreliable. So I look at also the 
we have a sub bottom profiler as well. Oh. Um, and okay. so it's a bit of a misnomer. We don't use it for sub pro sub bottom. Yeah, we really use it for just bottom, like bottom, bottom track. Bottom yeah. tracking and yeah. finding the bottom. We've got a question about the cameras on Herc and Argus. They say if they're filled with fluid air, which they must have discussed on the last watch, um, how deep could they go before failing? Yeah, the cameras um, have air in them. Uh, some of them are backfilled with nitrogen gas. Um, depends on the camera, honestly. Um, they do have a depth rating, and a lot of that's also dependent on the housing that it's in. Um, so if you have a one atmospheric housing, then um, you maybe have more of a, well, how should I say this? The um, digital, the HD camera, thank you. That's a titanium housing, um, so it really depends on what the housing's made of and what you backfill it with. So for the really fancy cameras, we backfill those with nitrogen gas. Cool. It's really a merry-go-round of way of describing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry for the roller coaster right there, guys. Did I answer your question? Yes. <laughs> the thi yeah, Thank the you. thickness of the whatever. The thickness and material of the pressure housing mm. just kind of dictates our. But camera housings, you know, are a little tough because they have a. You have to be able to see through them, right? So they got the glass on the on the front. Yeah. But those mm. are pretty thick lenses or, or pieces of glass, so that's good. And glass is not a bad kind of pressure housing because it can deform a little bit, which is helpful, but it also can fail. So the I glass, wonder what the glass is. What do they? The glass on the front of uh, of the uh, HD camera that's on Herc uh, is especially ground glass. Uh, it's an aspheric lens that corrects for the transmission of light in water yeah. versus air. The uh, lens that's inside is a uh, a standard broadcast uh, HD uh, ENG lens lens uh, that's made to shoot in air because that's where people shoot video, but uh, and so the, the ground glass on the front of it corrects because uh, light propagates differently in, uh, in water, and so it corrects for that and presents it to the lens uh, in the right uh, orientation. Are, are there other systems that do it the other way around? So the pressure housing, it doesn't have the distorted lens, but the camera itself does? Yes. Uh, there are, are uh, housings that have a flat glass on the front of it, which is far uh, easier, cheaper uh, to do. Uh -huh. uh, but then you have to do some fairly serious correction inside, either optically and or electronically. Interesting. Um, so it's an interesting balance of... Uh, so it could be cheaper, though. Uh, it is cheaper. It's easier to construct. The the, uh, uh, the glass part of it is, is far cheaper mm -hmm. uh, in that it doesn't have to be specially cast and then ground. Uh, and uh, the housing is, is easier because basically you're just bolting a, a plate on the front with enough... Uh, glass thick enough on the on the front of it rather than having to specially ground. Mm. But then on the back side of it, you've got to either uh, do the optical correction and or electronic correction, mm. which uh, gets complex. Yeah. We just disassembled, <coughs> excuse me, we just took apart the HD camera before this cruise, um, the one that was on Argus, and took off that glass the spherical housing, or sorry, the spherical lens. And um, it was fantastically thick and just beautifully crafted. I mean, it has to be almost perfect. Um, but yeah, we were just staring at it in the shop for a while and it had these these pressure cracks. Um, so those were that's why we had to disassemble it. But um, yeah, it was a beautifully crafted piece of glass. Sorry, let's interrupt real quick. Um, so Adam, we have here, we could continue on this same contour and then uh, move up slope, or we could kind of go more directly up slope. I like option two. Option two. So f after this move, Argus will end up somewhere around here, and we'll just kind of go up like that. Perfect. Okay. And then we'll ride the flat bit for a bit, or we could go along contour again and then up if we wanted. Okay. Let's uh Okay. Yeah. Let's
make the move and then we'll see what see what we're seeing. Sure. Bridge nav. Uh, step 100 meters bearing zero five zero. Thank you. You should still have quite a bit of uh, Playback. whatever that was, one, two, zero. Yeah. An another 40 meters of it, but it'll round and start to go up. So I'll watch that and let you know. Sure thing. Thanks, Ernie. Yep. It does seem like there's some kind of fabric to these deposits. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, we're kind of looking a at like west southwest. Oops, we're doing some sort of kind of foliation that might be like. I mean, this is probably sediment, like volcanic plastic material that is accumulated on this slope. But it could be primary. It could be. Yeah. Pillows on top of pillows. It's roughly we're looking at it that, like that way. But we could also be not seeing true dip either. Yeah. This is the Ramilla Gorgia Militaris. Did I say that right? Yeah. Yeah. H.U. Murakamp went up again, huh? Is there a sponge next to that percentage? Oh yeah, looks like it. You want to look at it? Yeah. Piece in a sec, yeah. Thank you. Go ahead and push on in there, please, Dave. Wow, that's a bulbous alien face if I've ever seen one. Mm -hmm. Did one pop up here? <laughs> oh, right there, please. Thank you. Yeah, sure thing. Does anyone know what the the starfish like the orange thing is? A brisinged sea star. Ooh, Osako says that for anyone watching, um, the Romulogorgia militaris is a brand new genus name established this year. Oh. Wow. We're seeing a lot Great. of it. It's pretty deep. It seems like it's dominant deeper and then it dissipates as we get shallower. Yeah, pick up more of the bamboo stuff shallower. At least on these seamounts, it seems that way. We have a question from one of my students, Adam. <laughs> Great. Hey, Adam. I miss you all too, first hour. Um, he wants to know, are strong currents present at this depth? And it, what kind of impact can they have on the habitat and the organisms that live there? 
Well, that's a good question. They certainly can be strong. Um, I don't think they are right now. Yeah. Um, nope. It seems oh. like in this, I don't know, maybe I'm mistaken, in this seamount chain, that it was, it was stronger as we ascend. Mm -hmm. So this, this deep, which is 3,000 meters, it's been less so. Yeah, and um, I think we think they have a huge impact on the fauna that station. live down here. Um, that the currents is what bring the bring the food, um, but it's not well understood or constrained on um, the currents, how those currents actually are moving in the deep ocean, mm -hmm. um, on more of a local scale. Really hiding, does not want the light. Oh, we're Don't sorry, stay too late, party. Adam. <laughs> All right, full wide there, please, Dave. Looks like we're still going one two zero. I haven't felt that zero five zero yet. Raj. Renny, what do you look at to tell if the ship is still moving or not? Um, so I, I know what... There's a few different ways. Uh, I know what move I called in, uh -huh. and I can see that I can confirm that they did. Um, but on the DP2 screen, yep. there's a goal, two goal true. Yeah. So 66 meters to go, going zero five zero. Seems so like sometimes we'll have like three meters left and you'll say it's stopped. And all. I'll say that it's stopped? Yep. Yeah, so sometimes um, you can kind of see our right above that there's like an error of okay. our position and yeah. also those crosshairs over there. So we could essentially have hit the position, but um, the ship is just kind of like fine tuning. So it won't say zero five zero in this case. It'll be like, oh, it's actually... Uh, you know, it it overshot it to the west, so now it has to go zero nine zero to catch up. And I call oh. it like we're pretty much there. Okay. And I also, yeah, in general, just the way that the speed moves at these depths is that's as a couple meters left is as good as like it's about stopped. Okay. And what about when you're trying to figure out whether our Argus is starting to feel it or is settling out? How do you tell? So for that, I'm looking at our track on either. I pack so you can I can if you have high back up or rough nav whichever one um that you can see the strike we were going out here that one two zero now we're just starting to curve more like zero nine zero and then eventually it'll be like a kind of a curve up to zero five zero so just before when I when I mentioned that Argus hadn't seen any swing yet but now it's starting to okay see how it's kind of going yeah. a bit in that direction. It's never going to, especially at these depths, it's not going to make that sharp angle that the ship did. It'll just gradually do it. Okay. I'm going to reset your DVL here. Yeah, sure thing, Vinny. Yep. Dave, can you answer a video question? I'll try. One of our viewers asked, how does the resolution that they are seeing on their stream compared to what we see here in the control van? Um, unfortunately, uh, you don't get to see full resolution. Uh, it is HD when it starts, which is 1920 by uh, 1080. And uh, unfortunately, we have to crunch that down a little bit to fit the bandwidth constraints of the satellite signal. Uh, so we bring down the resolution of the uh, the signal to 1280 by 720, and then we compress that, uh, and satellite feed one, uh, the Hurt camera, is compressed to about, think about it here, six megabits, uh, an MPEG-4 stream, uh, which is pretty decent, and it actually looks pretty good if you uh, look at it full screen. Um, it's nothing like sitting in front of a, a broadcast quality monitor in the in the van, seeing the, the camera directly, unfortunately, but it's the best we can do. Uh, so you're uh, you're getting pretty close. Thank you, Dave. Sure. Keep your questions coming. 
Looks like we have viewers in 11 countries right now. Send us your questions. But Dave, so in recording that, we, rec we, we broadcast and they record on shore, but we also record here at full resolution, is that correct? Uh, not quite full resolution. We're su using some uh, mild compression. Okay. Uh, we use uh, ProRes HQ, uh, and that uh, is about 120 megabits a second. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, relatively decent quality, still some compression, but, uh, but mild. Uh, we also record a proxy version of that uh, at a much lower bit rate, MPEG-4. Uh, not as low as what goes out over the satellite, but uh, those files are much easier to handle. They're smaller. Uh, they're still pretty good quality uh, and uh, easily fit uh, a couple of... Uh, uh, we record in 15-minute chunks, uh, so easily fit a couple or three of those onto uh, a small thumb drive or something if you wanted to look at something on a laptop or... So if you were a scientist reviewing this... Dave, you want to push on in there, please? Bit. Go ahead. Thank you. You would want... You'd probably want to use the proxy because it's faster to download, uh, gives you all of the same information. Okay. Uh, and then if you needed high-quality uh, video for right, uh, presentation please. or uh, some other kind of uh, analysis, then you could uh, request and download the, uh, the full uh, ProRes version of it. Yeah, we'll just come up here and looks mm -hmm. like the wall keeps going. Keeps going for days. We have a favorite viewer question that comes every shift, and this one I'm going to throw to Sarah. Okay. <laughs> What's the scariest thing you've seen besides trash? Oh, scariest thing. <laughs> uh, the sea spider. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm going to look Super it up. I haven't creep. seen one of those yet. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it's a picnic on it, if it's a giant, or what, what the term is for the, the big ones. Ugh. Yeah, I thought it was safe in the ocean. <laughs> Yeah, they just look very like sci-fi on Oh, yeah. yeah. Where did you see that the sea spider? I think it was last expedition. Okay. I think so. Yeah, they're they're creepy, but like cool at the same time. Yeah. Um because they're all legs primarily like hardly any body to them so all their organs including like their respiratory system is along their legs Ooh, very cool. but they like they digest they um liquefy their prey and then slurp it down mm -hmm. whoa that's a cool that's trick cool. make a little smoothie they do <laughs> bamboo smoothie bamboo smoothie we're not all that not all that different sea spiders and me <laughs> My sources say that they are found in oceans all over the world. Yeah. Yeah. Dang. Do you think they're the originators of Soylent? Then? <laughs> 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 That's where the idea came from. <laughs> it's been a pretty exciting kind of venture on the steep walls here. Yeah. So Ramula Gorgia Militaris must not really need high current. Must not have a large food load that it needs. I don't know. That's speculation. But it seems like not only that it just seems like a lot less current down at these depths and still manage to survive. Yeah. They must not be dominantly calcium carbonate either. Yeah. It Maybe aragonitic or... Yeah. I don't know if it... Are, can corals be silicious? I don't know. I know that they... I know the black corals are typically down deeper. Yeah. Of the lack Which of calcium carbonate skeleton, but...
at least smaller proportion. Uh, Sako says the primnoidae surface is covered with manganese, mag sorry, magnesium calcite um, sclerites, mm. which is like an aragonite, and inside it's pro protonous. Mm. Right, ready for a question? This one's for everybody. One of, our, one of our viewers asked, if you were a deep sea creature, which one would you be? Oh. And why? Tom that. <laughs> I think yeah. I would be a picnogonid, just for the reason that I can... Terrify Sarah? My, no, <laughs> not to terrify Sarah, <laughs> but to liquefy my prey and swim. <laughs> nice. I think that's a very cool superpower. Smoothies are delicious. <laughs> Very short lifespan. Do they? I think so. Relative to humans, I suppose. I want to be a John Cops. <laughs> 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 I want to be round and cute and have little knees. And get by with a grouchy <laughs> face all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've come across the blob sculpins before. Blobfish. Pretty grumpy looking. <laughs> Very grumpy. What about you, Lisa? Oh, good question. Maybe one of those snake stars just hanging out Ooh. in the coral up high, taking it all in. Oh, eating one. all day. <laughs> Ooh, great question. One of our viewers asked, in the absence of photosynthesis and chemosynthesis, what do the organisms rely on for nutrients in this area? Um, filter feeding. Yep. Yeah. They filter food out of the water column and um, the corals and sponges do. The cucumbers will filter it out of the sediment. It's a pretty short food chain down here, right? I, I think that's one of the questions that our scientists are asking, at least for the sea cucumbers, why they want them with the gut contents intact. And a viewer's following up saying, uh, where do those nutrients in the sediment come from originally? That would be the marine snow, correct? Correct. I think that's the, the majority. Um, I don't know, maybe Asako knows m more about the other stuff. But yeah, it's, so it's falling from the surface. Yeah, midwater creatures and surface creatures and... It's not an easy place to live. Nope. You know, I was sail I sailed with a biologist, Chuck Fisher, who was at Penn State, now retired, I believe. And he was kind of talking about the deep sea as actually, once you're adapted to it, it's not that. He argued that it wasn't really a... Um, I don't, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but less... We have to go through, for example, we have diurnal cycles on land, there's seasons, 
Uh, so there's a lot of temperature variation, um, what have you, but down at depth, it's kind of, there's a seasonality, I would imagine, to the detritus that's falling down, perhaps, but it's much more constant of a that's lifestyle, true. and it's it's always dark, it's always um, certain pressure, it's always a certain temperature. Unless you're in like hydrothermal vents or something, but so simple and slow, but not easy. Yes, yeah. I'll choose my words carefully there. I wouldn't say easy, yeah. But uh, more con more constant, predictable, predictably difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Holothurian, you got to think, you got to think this is, I mean, you seem like you'd be happier in the sediment, <laughs> <laughs> not here. Got to push in on this little potentially sad Holothurian. <laughs> <laughs> I have chosen poorly. We are below 3,000 meters. Uh, not anymore, but still right about at it. 2982. Hello, he's waving at us. Oh, <laughs> mine is frozen then. Um, yeah, do you have the little on the top right? I should say you should oh. refresh that every however fast. Doesn't have to be every second, but all right, full wide there, please, Dave. All right, keep your questions coming. I want to know what deep sea creature um, everyone else would be. So as we go up here, what, remind me again, it was 2940? Uh, was the rock 2959. 59, okay. So it'll probably be, I think the slope should flatten out as we get to, uh, as we move up. Okay. It might be easier to... Hopefully there's a loose rock up there. Yeah, sure. Um, so there's a ship move. We got 70 meters left, so about 100 meters left in uh, Hercules. Uh, so maybe laterally. The, yes, okay. yeah. So maybe the end of that ship move will be somewhere in the ballpark. Okay. Maybe a little bit shallower, but. That's all right. A little bit there, Jake. Yeah. One of our viewers is asking if there are any predators for the scavengers we're seeing on the seafloor. So I, I'm guessing like the sea cucumbers. I would imagine so, yeah. Yeah, I have no idea what eats sea cucumbers. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if fish are interested in that or crabs. Sea stars, maybe? Sea stars, mm -hmm. yeah. You have to... I'm always surprised that they're such vicious predators, but... To us, they look very cute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we had uh, we we're at the hydrothermal vents. I don't remember which ones. One of the ones that we visited in the past, and went to go pick up some clams, and um, we had one clam that the manipulator had uh, crushed a bit, and the crabs, I mean, just immediately swarmed in. Oh. oh. Wow. <laughs> and we're just ripping it apart. Huh. But you just, I, it's really difficult 
as a human who sees light to imagine these creatures living in complete darkness and we shine a light and see the biodiversity at the hydrothermal vents and you know everything that's happening and they're just going kind of by feel <laughs> yeah temperature and finding food and vibration the uh, yeah sense vibration vibration yeah it's an endeavor and we dropped uh an elevator down and you know, came down hit the seafloor and we flew over to it and by the time we flew over to it we had a lock on it knew where it was that kind of stuff yeah and uh by the time we flew over to it in 15 minutes something like that covered in crabs yeah absolutely covered in spider crabs wow so they just okay something big fell let's yeah. go yeah you know we can eat could for be days a, could be a whale fall yeah. right <laughs> yeah wow this is it this is the big one yeah and then they're they were sitting on it uh pulling on the bungee cords boring, wow boring, boring. Uh -huh. wow that's funny <laughs> Yeah, they they like sit at the top of the tube worms and just kind of like wait for them to come out and get a little snip. Tube mm. worms go back in. Huh. They just wait for another snip. <laughs> that is the worst neighbor you could ever have. Yeah. <laughs> Constantly taking little clippings of your body. Yeah. Do you have to do anything special to prepare the ROVs to go to those hydrothermal vents? Are there any complications? Not, not terribly, no. We usually, whenever we do event work, we have temperature probes and all that we have at the ready. And usually that also involves other instrumentation that scientists want to use to collect the event fluid, gases, um, yeah, water composition. So usually there's other instrumentation that we have on board for that. I will integrate in kind of separately and, and specifically, but for otherwise other standard operations of the vehicles, it's all the all the same. Is there like is there a max temperature you can operate in? Um, it's actually very surprising. Hydrothermal vents they cool very quickly. The fluid coming out of them mm -hmm. um, that's why you get all that precipitate cloud. Um, so as long as we don't set the vehicle immediately directly on top of one. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty good. We have m melted things. Ooh. Yeah, we definitely <laughs> melted the tether before. Yeah, <laughs> not all the way through, but wow, we've also melted a little bit of the brow bar. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Well, that one was I was there for that. It's pretty obvious. Why did you know happens. it happened while the ROV was still diving, or did you find out when you got back? <laughs> um, you can it, sometimes you can visibly tell, but when you're still diving, if um. You've melted something in your immediate visibility. Um, if you melt your tether, then you'll definitely know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, the, you know, we put temperature probes, and one of the tasks that we have at Ocean Networks Canada is we're trying to get, you know, a temperature probe into the, the hottest part. Essentially, there's a constant, whatever the, the source is, has a, a high temperature, and it emits out. It's usually like 300 some degrees Celsius, and um, but the temperature probe. I mean, we're we're putting it in, and, and you could be off by a centimeter, and it's cold. You know, mm. Nowhere near 300. Much closer to two. <laughs> and you can't just jam it in there either, because it's got a, a ceramic component to it. That yeah, will and crack, and so you have to hold it in the fluid, warm it up. And position yeah. it, not let it cool off. Mm. It's quite a process. Yeah. Um. I see your rock question. We're going to hold that for a few minutes. Adam's not on the mic right this second. So we could um, we could hold the ship now. we got about 30 meters left in the move where we could see it all the way through. I don't think we'll get too much shallower, maybe 10 to 20 meters shallower. But I know that we're already yeah. around the depth you want. We could also 
possibly grab one on the fly if if that if the depth is really cr critical. If we pause now, how much uh, how much more swing? Uh, I don't think it'll be too much. Maybe ten meters let's vertical. Okay, let's go ahead and pause. Okay. Bridge now. Hold position. Thank you. Yeah, just because it's the rocks are starting to look presumably good for what you want. Yeah. Somewhere. Yeah, I don't want to wait and then we can't. It's all solid up yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, we're looking for something that would fit ideally in one of the smaller starboard bio boxes. Um, okay. Something with a side exposed to seawater with less sediment on it. Okay. Seems like we're in the right region for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to have to do some describing, though, because I don't have a telestrator. Um, um, maybe we'll give it, like, another. There's Okay, you want to wait a little longer? Uh, yeah. Yeah, just a little bit. We can get out ahead, actually, and then it should be good. I don't think Argus will swing too much sure. more than a tether length. Let me know when I can start eyeballing rocks. Roger that. Just a reminder to our viewers, we love your questions. Keep sending them to the chat. All right, Sarah, I think we're in a good enough position here. Okay. Um, so let us know. You said one that's a little bit less sedimented, swept, and smaller. and Yeah. So ideally something um, maybe spherical or cubic so that we have a side exposed to the seawater. Okay. Um, but not directly on top being having sediment falling on it. Roger that. Maybe something over to the left. This patch kind of looks like stuck left together. Like to the lasers there, right there? Um, a little bit further left uh -huh. of the lasers, but same horizon. Oh, I see down here, maybe? Uh, lasers are almost on it now, right below lasers. The big rock? Yeah, that bigger one with the shadow. Okay. You guys wanted a small one, though, right? Is that one not going to fit in the side box, small box? Questionable. Yeah, very questionable. Or the smallers. What about the ones a little bit down to the left, right? Yeah, those down there yeah, would be probably look better look candidates. Yeah, kind of spherical. Yeah, we can try these out. Yeah, those two. Maybe a little bit to the left of the lasers yeah. now. It's more spherical. Is that what you're looking at, Jake? Yeah. Okay. What the two ones? Yeah, they're right to the left. Lasers are on them right now. All right. Yeah, come up a little bit. Yeah, they're good. I don't think we'll move too much more than that. I'm looking at this one. Okay. Yeah, we're looking Sorry. clear. Oh, okay. Poke that one. That one looks a little bit bigger. Looks too big? I think she's talking about the lower left. The little spherical one? This yeah. One? Yep, that one. Nice, that one there. Yeah. 
Oh, I think, that one's the, I think that one's shadowed. I think it's bigger than it looks. Okay. What about the one like kind of center, like bottom, right up um, against the sediment? This one. How's that here. look for you? Yep. Seems like easier access if it's not cemented. No, oh, stuck. That one's stuck as well. What about that one over there? The lumpy to the right. Lumpy, lumpy. Um, yeah. You want the stick? Got the old fashioned ready? Yeah, yeah old we got a quick draw. Okay. Yeah. What did you do? Yeah. No, because I got to log it too. That one? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. Wait. Uh, they're all that guy. <laughs> oh, yeah, that one looks good. Yeah. The one Jess just pointed to. Looks Which great. one's that? Uh, it's Sticking the out. Thing. Yeah. Uh, Oh yeah, it was sitting right on top. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, with the laser. <laughs> <laughs> or not stuck? Yeah. Well, I haven't gotten, I haven't uh, gotten the teeth on it yet. How uh, about this one here? Oh, if you can, you get the jaws around that and give it a wiggle. Let me try. Yeah, close the jaws, yeah. Yeah. Come on. No. They're deceptively no. stuck. Uh, oh, maybe this one? I think we tried that one. Did we try that one already? Yeah, I think, I think so. so. Oh. I, I, got a good grip on I really that like one. that one, I guess. Are we at the end of a move? Yep. Yep. So do you want to pick up and look for a, a new spot, or yeah, have we, we not tried enough here? Oh, uh, whatever you want. We've tried most of the things in the view right here, yeah. okay. and it's been cemented. All right, let's... Well, yeah. Pick up oh, wide there, please, Dave. But we have a little bit of a grid we can work with now that we're paused. You can keep the arm out there, Jake, if you want. What do you think close to the slurp hose looks? I think those are cemented. That yeah, all looks and they're small. All right. I'm done. On the hunt. We're on the hunt, yeah. Rock hunt. We need Rock some hunting hunt. music. <laughs> we do. Jaws theme? Rock and roll. Is it going to come up on the winch when uh, when I come under you there? Some of that stuff looking looser. Yeah. Right by the jaws. A little yeah. big, though. That stuff there. Maybe that one. You're talking about that one? Yeah. That one are these down here? There's gotta be something in that pile. Let's try it. Alright, Jake, go ahead. Alright, which one which one are we looking at? Maybe the one right underneath the jaw. That one or this in here. I could try. one here? No. no, I think that one's pretty hard. Yeah, that's easy. Yeah. This one. Just look at, look. Or to my right, right here. Yeah, yeah. yeah, there you go. Oh, oh, there you go. oh it's oh. a moose. Oh. It's a oh. big boy. Oh. Oh. oh, well, not that oh. one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that, one, that one was, was pretty big anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Too big. What about the one behind it? Right here. Right here. That's um, below it, the one behind. Here. Yeah. Yeah, either that one or that one. Here. I thought rocks were generally sessile. <laughs> <laughs> that one may be loose too. I don't know if it's out of your oh. range. There you go. That, oh. that, that's loose. It'll come out. <laughs> you is think that, so? That yeah. Do you have enough exposure though? Yeah, I it's oh, not yeah. Ideal. No, it's a big. It's the whole that's thing. The whole thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. One behind. How it? about yeah? That one right there. Oh okay. Yeah. Nice. How's that? Does that fit your that fit your works. fancy? Yeah, we can work with that. You gonna hold it out? Rock fancy. You wanna rock hold it fancy. Out fancy rocks. Farther out. Yeah, you're too far in there. Yeah. yeah. Got a little hitchhiker. Excellent. 
You want to go ahead and drop it down a little bit, and then we can do a full push. All right, full on in there, please, Dave. It kind of looks like an oyster shell. <laughs> it is. A little brisinget or thing. What is that? Yeah. I think. Or it's sorry, uh, ophiroid. Ophiroid, the uh, brittle star. Adam's starting to bring some of his biology game. Yeah, yeah. I like looked at his computer to see who we got that from. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Full wide, please. And this is going in the starboard bin? Yeah. And I heard we have something floaty over there, is that correct? Um, uh, no, nothing floaty in the side. Um. All rocks. Roger. I don't know. Flock, the rocks, the last one was pretty mobile. That was a very mobile one. You never know if All you right. open this look box for, up. Look for happened. jumping rocks as yeah. you open it. Um, and sorry, what was the... Does it still have the sea star on it? The Ophiroid thing? I yeah. Think, I think it, it did. did. When we, uh, okay, let's put it in A or B then. All right. What sample number? This is going to be 086. 086. Nice. Will we be doing a Niskin with it? Yeah. Nice. And I'm sorry, I missed it. Was it A or B? A. A. Okay. Thank you. 2937 meters depth. Thank you. And then for the Niskins. Niskins open are one, two, three, and four. Roger. One, two, three, and four. All right. Some chocolate back there. It's going for four. I think this is four. Yep. Four. Done. Right. Nice. Right. Nicely done. Let's take a look here at the context. We've got a scoop now. <laughs> yeah. Nice. All right. You're ready to roll again. All right. Uh, yeah, Adam, I don't know if you can Please. chime in for a second here. Nice, Jake. Hold on. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, just wanted to say, uh, you know, we kind of finished that move there. We're at a less steep slope. I wanted to know if you wanted to continue up it kind of like that or uh, get Yes. It. Okay. Perfect. Sounds good. We'll do that for a bit. Zero seven five. Zero seven five, Reg. Bridge nav. Step 100 meters, bearing 075. Thank you, Martina. Sounded good. For those of you who are on the last expedition, we have a question about how the sediment here compares to the sediment of, at Papahana Makuakea National Marine Monument. I haven't looked at our, too much of the core stuff that we collected yet, but um, it seems like this stuff has more f like clays and silt, um, but that could be sampling bias as well. Um, the last expedition was primarily like 
perfectly spherical tests from animals.